Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this is the moment of truth. Oh, you know it! White supremacy doesn't take a holiday, and neither does black empowerment. It's the most wonderful time of the year, where we take a dump on everything white power holds dear. Times like this, it's especially gratifying that I make these moment of truth morning briefings. That way you can get this truth before you can make it to the cookout. Today is a holiday about freedom, or so we're told. It's about liberty, or so we're told. A celebration of what it means to be free, because that's what it means to be American. Now, I'm sure the white media will tell you that you need to remember the 4th of July, or I mean July. And because so many people are sheep, I know some of your soft-headed friends and even family members will tell you the same thing. We should remember these days now. This is a day off work and that's all that matters. And while that whole, well, this is a day off work thing is fine in the abstract, the problem is we don't live in an abstraction. We live in a real world with real context. So when the white media says you need to remember the reason for this holiday, you know what? I agree. You should remember the 4th of July. I mean, uh, July. You should remember exactly what this holiday is about. Remember that while the white slave owners of the colonies were complaining that taxes was slavery, same way that they do today, those same white men were holding black people as literal slaves, and they did so without a pang of remorse or even sympathy. In fact, they did the opposite. They were plotting and planning how to make sure that the condition of black people as an oppressed people never changed. The U.S.'s oldest tradition is hypocrisy. Make sure you remember that. And you also need to remember that there were 56 white men who signed the Declaration of Independence, and 41 of them were slave owners. That's right. All but 15 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence were slave owners. And that includes Benjamin Franklin, who all the movies and TV shows conveniently leave that little detail out. They try to treat him as if he was just this kindly old inventor from Philadelphia, and Benjamin Franklin, he didn't have a malicious bone in his body. The entire reason for the holiday was because a group of white slave owners were having a disagreement with another group of white slave owners in Britain over how much they ought to pay in taxes. But we were the ones whose labor generated those taxes, so they were arguing over our money. Our ancestors were the ones who created Wall Street, literally. The very Wall Street that was the heart of the American economy, the American financial sector. It was our black labor that took a quote-unquote untamed wilderness and hewed a nation out of it. It was ours, not theirs. Make sure you remember that while you're busy frolicking and having fun today and wondering how you'll make rent or pay your bills. And please make sure you remember the Star Spangled Banner. Why, you can't have a July 4th celebration without that, now can you? The National Anthem. Land of the free, home of the brave. When it plays, you remember to stand up. Like a good little boy. Because if you remain seated, why, that would be a sign of total disrespect for this nation that's done so much to you, I mean, uh, for you. And you make sure to remember the white supremacist who wrote the Star Spangled Banner, Francis Scott Key. Remember that he was a slave owner. Remember that he was also a U.S. attorney, and he went to court several times to fight for other slave owners' right to own your and my ancestors' as property, and to make sure that the institution of slavery spread. That was the guy who wrote Land of the Free, Home of the Brave. Oh, I'm sure your heart will go pitter-pat for the Star Spangled Banner today when you hear it, right? Remember how this country has rolled out the welcome mat for everyone else in the world and given them the fruits of black folks' labors, given preferential treatment to everybody while denying us our basic human rights. And I'm sure some of the more unpatriotic types among you may wonder why you should be required to remember all those things. Because that's what this holiday is all about. It's a celebration of white power laying claims to this land and enshrining black oppression into the nation's very being. Racist hypocrites who had the nerve to write that all men are created equal, while at the same time holding innocent men, women, and even children as slaves. They are slaves, the guys who were writing those words. The very founding document of the country starts off from the presupposition that black people are not human beings. 
That's what July 4th celebrates. Oh, it was about an argument over taxes, all right. They wanted to break away from Britain over taxes. They wanted to keep all the money that was the result of our ancestors' labor. And without our labor, they would have had no money to fight a war with, and they wouldn't even have had a country worth fighting for. And yet, this is supposed to be a celebration of freedom. Whose freedom? Not black people's. July 4th is a celebration of white supremacy getting something for nothing. It's a celebration of the greatest crime in human history. How a bunch of racist degenerates got over on black folks at the cost of our blood, sweat, tears, and lives. That's what July 4th is. Oh, I know that makes it a little hard for you to enjoy the cookout today, but if you're going to celebrate something, at the very least, don't you think you ought to know what that something is? Shouldn't you at the very least be honest about what it is that you're celebrating? And if you have to overlook and forget all of the things that I told you to remember just so you can stomach this holiday, then don't you think there's something deeply wrong with a country like that? Don't you think that there's something deeply wrong with the people who demand that you forget your history while at the same time demanding that you remember theirs and honor theirs and cherish theirs, even though their history is a story of how they oppressed killed, raped, murdered, and deprived you and my ancestors and us of our very basic human rights. And we're told that we are required to honor that. We are required to celebrate that. A celebration of black oppression. Is that freedom? Or is that what the U.S. accuses countries like Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea of doing? A country that requires you to fight for your basic human rights, the most basic of human rights, starting with merely the right to exist. That's not a country worth fighting for, and it's not a country worth celebrating either. You need to remember the shrieking fraud that this country is. The United Snakes is a racist lie. And yet you're going to have a lot of white supremacists and a few empty-headed Negroes who will be telling you that you need to celebrate. You're going to have a whole bunch of white supremacists telling us you need to celebrate it anyway. And what do you call someone who puts the interests and wishes and desires and needs of everybody else ahead of themselves? What do you call a person who simply carries out the directions they're told by complete strangers like a mindless servant? What do you call someone who does that? What do you call someone who puts the comfort of other people, particularly those who mistreat him, ahead of his own needs, starting with his need for dignity? What do you call that person? When you willingly go along with something that makes you feel like you have to ignore your own dignity, then what does that make you? One thing it doesn't make you is free. Happy Fourth of July. Good day and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Nora Brown, Loke Thies, Evangeline Daly, Gebra Gale, and Daryl Bledsoe. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.